Good day, everyone. My name is Martins Esther. I and my group will be taking on the Group 9 project, a residential palace with 18 bedrooms using traditional African architecture. The brief of the project is a residential palace with 18 bedrooms using traditional African architectural style. And these are the spaces that are in the, in the building. We have the outdoor parking space, the living room, the bedroom suites, the pool, the prayer room. Now, the literature review of the building. We have... First off, we all know what a palace is. When we talk about a palace, we're talking about a grand home, a luxurious home, mostly for wealthy people, for royalties, or for important officials. The African architectural style. We chose the northern region of, Af of Africa to use as con as for concentration, and we chose Egypt in particular. And we have the Egyptian architecture. The Egyptian architecture, they were known for their grand and luxurious palaces and temples. The location of our, of our site. Our site is located in Nigeria, to be precise, in Enugu State. And then the case study. The case, we have two case studies, and, which, and one of which is the Sakakini Palace. This was built in 1897 by Gabriel Habib Sakakini. And this, and this building, is, this palace is significant because it's a symbol of Egypt's 19th century European cultural influence. Then the next case study, we have the Abdin case study, the Abdin Palace, and it was built, it was completed in 1874, and it's significant because it's a symbol of Egypt's royal era and a major tourist site attraction. So, on here we have the conceptual developments in which we use nature as our design concept. First of all, using nature as a design concept involves incorporating elements, patterns, and principles found in natural world into our designs, in which we inverted forms and shapes patterns and textures, sustainability, rhythm, and balance. So, so we, here we have the main design presentations of the floor plans. We have the proposed site, which has the building centered at the middle, and the gen and gate house, which are both at the left and right hand side of the major road. Then we have a prayer house and a meditation center at the back of the house, together with the pool, with a sitting area. Then here's our ground floor plan, which entails the entrance hall, living room, guest room, which is downstairs, like the ground floor and the kitchen, which are by the left hand side of the building. And then moving on to the first floor plan, which has the sitting area, like the family lounge with seven bedrooms in total. And we have the final floor, which has the remaining part of the rooms with the master's bedroom, which only has access to this um, sit-out, to the topmost layer of the sit-out. Then here are like design visualizations of the plan. Just keep moving. These are the exterior perspectives of the building. Keep moving. Keep going, keep going. So in, in summary, the African, the traditional African style, uh, the traditional African architectural style is known for their pattern of building, which is complexity in their building and then symmetry. And they're also known for their materials and they're also known for their grand facade and luxurious facade. Thank you. My name is Abodike Prince, and I am my group, Group 10. We are here to present a design multi bedroom villa. So, um, our villa, the name of our villa is called Horizon Villa, which was gotten from the inspiration of light design and techniques. And then the aim is to have creativity and originality of the concept design. The building must be aesthetically pleasing, and then also the functionality. The deliverables are the architectural, the drawings the slides, and then the tree animation. Next slide. So we did um, research findings on some of the spaces of the villa, like foyer, um, bedrooms, the lounge room, and then the great room, so that we're able to get the, the spaces. Site. The site description is located at um, Udi in Enugu State, and then is generally flat, with a slight slope of 0 to 2% to allow for drainage. And then the area of the site is about 8,200 meters squared. And then the soil is, uh, is uniform, and then there is no rocky outcrops on the soil. 
We did the site, site analysis and then we discovered where the sun will rise and where the sun will set and also the northeast wind trail and then the southwest monsoon. And then we did two case studies. The first one is Medis Bay at Anguilla, located at, at United Kingdom. And what we learned on the case study was um, lighting and ventilation. And the second case study is at Vietnam. Vietnam. And what we learned from the case study is efficient use of trees to allow uh, for wind and then also for ventilation. My name is Wang Kwewe Kenneth Joshua. I'm here to take you on the concept development and the design process. So the concept development which we use is eco-connectivity, providing light, lighting and um, ventilation into, into this building. We want to use open floor plans to provide a clear pathway between these spaces and also um, links between these spaces with use of glass walls and open side, side, side lines. So yeah, on the site plan, we have, um, we have um, the proposed building from which you get access to the entrance into the building. And behind the building, we have, um, we have the carport, because this is um, a villa. And to shed, to shed more light into the building, it is, it is used to provide space for multiple people who could live here at the time, with the amount of rooms provided in it. So we have um, enough parking spaces in this building. Different, we have different lounges, and we have all the rooms on the first floor on the right-hand side. There are multiple recreational spaces in this building, like the family lounge, the bar, the recreation, and from which you can have a site to the back part of the building where we have the nature-friendly environment, which, is, which, in, which illustrates the eco-friendly concept which you have given to this building. These are the elevations, then your 3D rendering pictures. You are doing it for the laptop crash, so that's what, that, that's what you saw. My name is Wanfei Kichuku and I'm from Group 11. We are giving a brief to design a cultural heritage center. We started off with the design objective, the site plan analysis, concept, floor plan, elevations and we went down to 3D views and render. What is a cultural heritage center? We knew that yes, a cultural heritage center is meant to preserve culture, to sustain historical significances of that particular area. It's, in, it's more like a civic center, but it's only that it, it's telling a story about that particular place. So we then went down to our case study. This is a case study that we sourced out in Sudan. This case study, what we found particular about it was how they placed their species. This is the site plan of the, of the building. The building is one, 110 by 130 meters. And we decided to observe this concentric radial thing. And also the edges were like given this because we, we decided to situate it here in Enugu. And since a cultural heritage center is trying to display culture, so why don't we go ahead to make the site plan tell the story soon? Good afternoon, sirs. My name is Makalo Chinoyelu. I'll be taking on the design concept. We decided to derive our concept from a hut, which is a significant um, form and style of architecture that the Igbos adopt. Then um, from... Our case study, we were able to get various rooms which should be found in a cultural heritage center. Okay, so on our elevation, we decided to um, adopt the colors of a hut since that's our concept. We also adopted some um, forms of lines on the, on the facade because most um, huts in, the, in Igbo land have... Um, carvings, various carvings that have different meanings. In our approach view, we also included two horns. These horns are very significant in Igbo culture. They have various traditional interpretations. 